day. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Therapeutic Yoga. Today's class focus is walking. Now, you would think, okay, well, if I want to be walking, I can just go and do walking. Yes, you are correct. But our entire focus for today's class is to efficiently prepare you for walking. So what that means is getting some really good, nice, happy hips, getting some nice, good mobility and flexibility and strength through our feet and preparing us for walking by making sure that our core muscles of our trunk and our pelvis are turned on. So what we're gonna be working on today is primarily in standing, but we're gonna start in sitting just to do a quick little couple things through our feet and our hips. What you're gonna need for class is at least one chair to be able to put to the side of your yoga mat so you'll have something for some added balance. I have myself set up so that my yoga mat is nice and close to a wall. So I'll be using my wall for balance as needed. Once we make it down to the yoga mat at the very end of class, you will need your yoga block. So maybe grab something like a yoga block or a yoga block and just place it somewhere near you so that it will be in arm's reach. Then have yourself a seat in a chair and let's begin on therapeutic yoga for walking. Now, first and foremost, move yourself out to the front half of your chair. Once you have yourself in the front half of your chair, allow your hands to come onto your thighs, get your spine nice and tall, lengthen your neck, settle your chin. We're gonna do a few cat cows here just to wake up that spine and get our nervous system moving and everything else going at the same time. So in this position, give me a nice deep inhale and really lift your chest up, stick your belly out, lengthen your neck, look up to the ceiling, make sure you're nicely and gently arching through your low back. Now squeeze those shoulder blades. And then as you exhale, pull your belly in, allow yourself to curl downward towards the sit bone, spread the shoulder blades, bring that chin to the chest and look all the way into that belly button. Well, let's do that two more times here. Inhaling, arching through the back, lifting that tailbone, feeling the weight onto the hamstrings, pulling those shoulder blades back and down, lifting that chest, gazing upward. And then as you exhale, letting that belly sink up and in first, rolling backwards onto that tailbone, dropping that rib cage down, dropping that neck, gazing inward. One more time. Can you inhale through that entire movement? And then can you exhale through that entire movement? Very nice. Slowly bring yourself back up into a seated position. Take your right leg and cross your right leg over your left leg. Now, if you're doing this first thing in the morning, you may be already be saying, oh, wow, my right hip is stiff. My hips are stiff because it's early in the morning and I haven't moved yet. And that's likely possible. So what I want you to think about, these are the best things to do to kind of wake up your lower half of your body and your trunk before you go out and do walking as a cardiovascular exercise. FYI, if you didn't realize this, the American Medical Association recommends walking over any other fitness regime in order to maintain your cardiovascular health. So lots of good reasons to walk. We're just preparing you for it today. So allow your ankle to be on that left knee area. Take your left hand and kind of grab that top side of that right ankle. Right hand, bring it on the inner part of your thigh towards your knee. Now in this position, sit nice and tall, shoulder blades back and down. You at home can probably feel as you're sitting in your chair that there's a lot more weight into your right sit bone right now. So what I want you to do is figure out how do you shift your weight slightly over so that you can put weight into that left sit bone? Merely doing that, you will feel an exaggeration of that stretch through your entire hip, joint, muscles, capsule, and ligaments. Now, in that position, staying nice and tall, take a nice deep inhale, and on the exhale, gently, just gently, push that right knee away from you a little bit. Stay focusing on sitting into that left sit bone. It'll stop you from rotating through your pelvis and your trunk. Holding here, keep that pressure onto that right knee. Take a nice deep inhale into your belly and exhaling out. One more time, nice deep inhale into your belly and exhaling out. 
Very nice. Now release the tension from the knee, but don't uncross the leg. Now, left hand, take your index finger and place it between your big toe and your second toe. Then with every other digit, bring it between two other toes until you have literally interlaced your right toes with your left fingers, like you would be interlacing your hands. Now in this position, all I want you to do is try to push those fingers downward into those knuckles of those toes as deeply as you can. And once you have that, sitting up nice and tall, still giving a little bit of a passive stretch to this right hip, allow yourself to squeeze with that left hand as you're spreading all of those toes, joints, and all of those bones of your forefoot. Holding that nice tight squeeze through that left hand, give yourself a deep inhale into your belly here. Feel that belly expanding out. And then as you exhale, relaxing, one more breath. Deep inhaling in, and then as you exhale out, relaxing. You've got it. Now slowly release the hand away from the toe, uncross the leg, and then take that left ankle, bring it up and over that right knee. Now in this position, allow yourself to take the right hand to the front of the left ankle, left hand to the inside part of the right knee. Now sit up nice and tall, even lengthen your neck, settle your chin. You will immediately feel when you do that, you put more weight down through that right sit bone. So you're creating a bit of a left rotation of everything to compensate for that external rotation of that hip. So here's what I want you to do. Figure out how you can take your body and push a little bit more down into that right sit bone. Can you see how you already feel that stretch through your left hip? Holding yourself here nice and tall. Take a nice deep inhale. And then as you exhale, gently push that left knee out as you're opening up more through that left hip. Only go as you can keep the weight through that right sit bone. All right, two deep breaths here. Nice deep inhale in and exhaling out. One more time here, deep inhaling in and exhaling out. Wonderful, release the tension on that left knee. Now allowing the right hand and the left toes, the right fingers, left toes. So start with the index finger and bring it and bring it between the first and the second toe. And then each and every other finger interlace it between two other toes. And then really pull those fingers down deep between those toes to get that spread of those bones of your forefoot. And once you have that position, sit up nice and tall. You're still getting a beautiful passive stretch through this left hip area. And then begin that nice tight squeeze of that right hand as you stretch open all of those bones of that forefoot. Hold yourself right here. Give me a nice deep inhale into the belly. Feel the belly expand as you do that. And exhaling out. One more time, nice deep inhale into the belly and exhaling out. You've got it. Now slowly release fingers from toes. As you do that, allow yourself to place your left foot on the floor. Now we are ready to go into standing. We're gonna do the majority of our class in standing, but I thought what better way to start a walking class than to make sure Everybody knows at home how to actually get up from sitting correctly. Did you know that there is a right way to do it? So most of us, when we stand up from a chair, we don't even think about it because we already have our mind tasked on the next thing we're doing, not what our physical body is performing. So today, what I want to do is give you a quick, quick, quick lesson on how to stand correctly. So one of my mentors, a fabulous man, named Greg Johnson with the Institute of Physical Art. He teaches individuals how to sit to stand by using a quick little analogy. So here's what I want you to think about at home. Think about how a, how a helicopter lifts off the ground. So it goes straight up into the air. Most of us, when we sit to stand, that's exactly what we do. So when we do that, we don't efficiently use our leg muscles. We overuse our back and our trunk muscles. 
now envision how a plane takes off from the land uh, from the ground it's a nice slow and steady incline as it goes up into the air so that means a lot more use of the legs a lot less use of overuse sorry of those back muscles so let's give it a try so here's what i want you to do take one leg you pick we're only going to do it once but take one leg and make sure that the knee is sitting straight on top of the middle of your foot. Then with the second leg, bring the second leg underneath your chair and behind you. By doing that, you're going to allow yourself to take off like a plane, not shoot up using your back muscles like a helicopter. All right, now in this position, take a moment to with either hand, either leg, it doesn't make a difference. Place the hands on the thighs, keep your body nice and tall and feel yourself, yourself weight shift over the front leg. You can keep your hands on your thigh if you need extra help, but now keeping that trunk nice and tall and hip hinging over that front leg, take a nice deep inhale. And as you exhale, push into the ground as you stand yourself up. And before you get to that very top, give your glutes a nice good pinch. Did you feel how much you used your leg? Are you weak at home and you ended up having to do something different? If so, working these quadriceps and these glutes should be on your exercise plan. All right, now here's what I want you to do. Take your chair and gently uh, and, and place your chair somewhere next to your yoga mat so that you have it for balance. Now. I'm next to a wall so that the chair is not going to be in the way of you guys watching me. So I want to get my chair out of the way, but you allow yourself to place your chair next to your yoga mat. Once you have it there, allow yourself, if you know you've got balance issues, to even have a second chair. So it can't be that you're using too much here. Um, and once you have that, Find yourself in the middle of your mat. So somewhere in the middle of your mat, place your feet so that they're hip distance apart. So an easy way to know that is to take your two fists and place them between your big toes. So fist distance apart or hip distance apart, gaze down at the outside of your feet and make sure that the outside of your feet line up with the outside of your mat. Now, those toes that we've already beautifully stretched out, let's go ahead and pick them up for a second and allow yourself to shift your body weight to your heels, to the balls of your toes, to your heels, to the balls of your toes, and keep doing that forward, backward, as you allow yourself to feel how much of a foot you actually have. Then can you find that oscillation getting smaller and smaller and smaller until you have the weight in the center of your feet between the balls of the toes and the heels and then allow yourself to relax your toes down in yoga oftentimes we'll say make sure that you've got pressure in all four corners or three corners of your feet for you i just want you to think balls of your feet and heels now that you have that position allow yourself to use your knee joints and tighten your knees hyperextend those knees as much as you can and then relax them so in the efficient standing position, you should see your lower leg bone perfectly perpendicular to the floor. A lot of us stand with our leg bones away and behind us, which makes us really overuse certain muscles of our legs. Now that you've got your knees soft, the weight through the center of your feet, take those hands up to the pelvis for me. Allow yourself to tilt and tuck your pelvis forward and backward. As you're tilting and tucking your pelvis forward and backward, do you feel the weight moving through your feet or can you keep it in the center? Then find the middle of the road between your tuck and your tilt and hold your pelvis in that position. Hopefully it's a nice even position. Like if it was a bowl of soup, you're not tilting out of the front or tipping out of the back. You've got it. Now that you've done that, allow yourself to take your right hand onto your chest your left hand onto your belly here. Now, a lot of us have standing postures, habits that we've learned that are very inefficient. So what I wanna do is there's lots of different posture problems that people have. 
I just want to make sure that we all are in a fairly efficient standing posture to start our first exercise. So in this position right now, if you were just to flex your neck and look down, can you see your feet? If you can't see your feet, chances are your rib cage is behind you. So as you look down, all you see is that left hand. If you're that person that you can see your feet, you don't need to necessarily do the next thing that I'm going to talk you through, but give it a try if you'd like. So check in with your feet, make sure you've got weight in the arches, make sure your knees are soft, make sure your pelvis is nice and level. Right hand and your entire rib cage. Take a nice deep inhale and lift it up as high as you can. Hold your breath and allow yourself to look down at your feet. Then as you exhale, let that rib cage come straight down on top of that pelvis. Maybe even feel your belly muscles and make sure you're not guarding them and making them nice and hard. Then take that left hand, bring it up to where that right hand is and push that chest in that position so that you keep that rib cage position. Now check in that you feel the weight still in the arch of your feet. Then can you lengthen your neck? and allow yourself to tuck your chin in. Can you feel that stretch to the top of your, the front of your neck? Uh, that's the cause of forward head posture right there. All these muscles get so, so tight. So keep that length that you've got right there, gaze straight in front of you, and then slowly let your arms fall down beside you. Final thing here, shrug your shoulders gently up, turn your thumbs to the back of the room to reposition your shoulder blades and then allow yourself to pull your shoulder blades down and give them a squeeze, then soften your hands. All right, now in this position, this is where we're beginning. So what I want you to do in this position is allow yourself, if you can and you feel comfortable, remember chair is somewhere near you or a wall or something is somewhere near you. Start to push down into the feet. Can you push a little bit more into the ball of your feet, a little bit more into the outer ball of your foot of your pinky toe? And can you feel that engagement up your legs? Now that you've got that, allow yourself to close your eyes. Okay, now, can you take a belly breath? Can you exhale that air through your nose? Let's do it, one more breath here. Nice deep inhale into the belly. And then exhaling out. You've got it. Now open your eyes, gently shift your weight to your left foot. As you shift your weight to your left foot, find something to hold on to if you need it for balance. Then simply pick your right foot up into the air. Once your right foot is up into the air, start doing nice good clockwise circles with those ankle joints, your tail accrual joint and all of the joints of your midfoot. So as you're doing those circles, you're just opening all those joints, preparing them for walking. Maybe do counterclockwise. Guess what you're doing with your left leg right here? You're strengthening it. Use a chair, wall, whatever you need for balance. Then place your right foot down. Weight shift to your right leg. Hold on if you need to. Lift the left leg in front of you and do some clockwise circles, opening up all of those joints and then counterclockwise circles in the opposite direction. So just getting those feet awake and alive as I start to lose my balance <laughs> and then bring your foot back down. All right, now that we've done that, we wanna do a little bit of waking up of our calf muscles. So our calf muscles are essential for pushing us off walking. So we wanna make sure that we've got them warmed up. So find your chair, hold on to it, or find a wall, hold on to it but don't lean onto the chair, don't lean onto the wall. So imagine that you've got that beautiful upright position. Once you have that beautiful upright position, gaze forward, take an inhale and lift yourself up onto your toes. And then as you exhale, slowly lower down. We're gonna do it four more times. So inhale, lift up on the toes. When you lift up on your toes, can you feel weight into your big toe and your second toe and your third toe? Exhale, look down three more times. Inhale, lift up on those toes as high as you can. Get those calf muscles warmed up. Exhale, slowly down two more times. Inhale, lifting up, exhaling down, 
And one more time, inhaling, lifting nice and high and exhaling down, you've got it. Now in this position, wherever your chair is for balance, keep it there, but take your right foot and step your right foot two to three feet in front of your left foot. Once you have that position, look at your left foot, allow the outside of the foot to line up with the mat. Now you're gonna feel like your leg is turned inward. That is a-okay. Once you have that position, allow yourself to put as much weight as you can into your right leg and push your left knee straight. Imagine pushing down into your left heel, I hope you at home are feeling that calf stretch like I am. Maintain this position here, holding it. Take a deep inhale into your belly, exhaling out. Two more breaths, deep inhaling in, exhaling out. One more time, inhaling in and exhaling out beautiful right leg step it back to where the left leg is and then take that left leg and step that left leg that three feet forward once you have or two whatever works for you it's all a matter of your height once you have that look at that right ankle make sure the outside of that foot lines up with the outside of your mat your entire leg should feel like it's turning inward Bend the left knee, bring your weight forward, straighten that right knee as much as you can and push into that heel. Feel that stretch through that calf muscle there. Holding here, holding the chair if you need to, obviously for balance, take a deep inhale into your belly and exhaling out. You've got it, two more breaths. Nice deep inhale into your belly, exhaling out. Push into that heel, straighten that knee, ladies and gentlemen. Inhale into your belly and exhaling out. Beautiful. Now, slowly stepping that left foot back to the right, going back to our standing alignment for a second, one more time to get our balance. Get your hip distance real fast this time. Rock your feet forward to backwards. Maybe lift up your toes, feel the ball, feel the heels drop your toes down, tighten those knees, relax those knees, tuck and tilt that pelvis, find the middle of the road, right hand onto the chest, left hand onto the belly, take a deep inhale, lift that entire rib cage up, look at your feet, exhale that rib cage down over the pelvis. All right, left hand onto the right hand, lengthen as you push those hands downward, lengthen through your neck, tuck your chin in. Now that you have that, gently drop your hands down to the side, shrug those shoulders slowly, roll those thumbs back, pull those shoulder blades back and down, give them a squeeze. Okay, now check in with your feet. We're gonna do three deep breaths, eyes closed, balance again. So in this position, gently, Gently push into the ball of your big toe, ball of your pinky toe, and your heel. Find that balance through all of your feet. Close your eyes. Belly breath, please. Take a nice deep inhale into your belly. And exhale out. Deep inhale into your belly. And exhale out. Deep inhale into the belly and exhale out. All right, we have the ankles taken care of. Now we need to move our way up our leg. Now, there's not a lot you need to do to prepare your knees for walking. If anything, usually what happens with the knees is they are that joint that gets injured between the tight ankles and the weak ankles and the tight hip and the weak hip. So what we're gonna do today is not skip the knee. We're gonna do one little exercise to strengthen the quadriceps and then make our way up to our hips. So in your standing position right now, we are gonna work on chair pose. Have your chair or your wall or whatever knee near you if you need it. Now, here's what I'd like you to do. Start to push down into your feet. Feel yourself pushing deeply down into your feet. You're going to use only your hip joints and your knee joints to move. 
So take a nice deep inhale. And as you exhale, bend your knees, bend your hips, allow your gaze to go down about three or four feet in front of you. Sit into that beautiful toilet bowl position. Can you look at your knees? Can you make sure that your knees look like they're stacking right over top of the arches of your feet or the forefoot? and your kneecaps line up with your second toes. Now, can you keep yourself in that chair pose? And can you push your feet down into the floor? Can you feel your glutes engaging here? Now maintain that chair pose, how deep you go entirely up to you. But here's a couple things I want you to pay attention to. Are you using abdominals or did you just let your tailbone lift and your back arch? If that's the case, pull that abdominal in and brace through those abdominals. Did you let your shoulders fall forward? If that's the case, pull those shoulder blades back, get those elbows next to your side, your neck in extension. If so, lengthen your neck, tuck your chin as you gaze forward. Keep pushing into your feet. All right, here we go. Three deep inhales and exhales through the belly. Nice deep inhale in and exhaling out. Two more. Deep inhale into the belly exhaling out and one more time nice deep inhale into that belly and exhaling out now push into your feet as you lift yourself up and when you get to the top give that glute a nice good pinch you got it ladies and gentlemen okay now let's move on to the hips so here's the first thing i want you to do i want you to make sure that your hips feel loose to you now when i say feel i mean kinesthetically they feel like they are getting warmed up. So we've already done a stretch and stand in sitting. What I want you to do is a little bit of a dance maneuver here, okay? So have your feet still that hip distance positioning, okay? And all I want you to do is just move your hips around like you're doing a figure eight circle. Your knees should bend, but I just want you to feel, do you feel that movement through your hips or pelvis, or do you feel you're doing that entirely through your low back? Then maybe change your figure eight position to the other direction. That's hard to do, isn't it? But just start to loosen up into some figure eight circles of your pelvis and your hips. And then stay in the standing position, put your weight on your left leg, lift that right leg slightly forward and start to do circles directly from your right hip joint. So remember today's class is about walking. What are some things we need to do to dynamically warm up to walk our best? Then maybe counterclockwise circles with that right hip. Yes, it's a balance exercise. That's why I told you to have that chair or that wall. Then bring the right foot down onto the floor, weight shift to the right leg, pick that left leg up and floor in front of you. Start with some clockwise circles, make sure the movement is only happening at the hip joint. As you're doing your circles, you can work on normal breathing. We're not doing deep breathing here. And then try your counterclockwise circles of that hip joint. All right, just a couple more. Then left foot comes down onto the floor. Now we want to stretch through these hip flexors. So have your chair so that you either have it in front of you or beside you. Take your left foot forward, your right foot backward and have them so that they're about a foot apart from one another. Once you have that position, maybe a foot and a half, allow the outside of the left foot to line up with the mat allow the outside of the right foot to line up with the mat. Then stack your left knee directly over the arch of your foot. So there's a light bend in your left knee. In this position, slightly bend your right knee, take a nice deep inhale. And as you exhale, tuck your tailbone under. So a nice, easy, gentle opening of the hip flexors in the standing position. As you're tucking that tailbone under, if you feel nothing at all here, step the right foot a little further back, tuck the tailbone under. So you want to feel something very gentle through the front of the right hip. Holding here, keep that tuck of that tailbone under, abdominals engaged, hamstrings working here. Lengthen your neck, settle your chin, take a deep inhale here and exhale. One more time, nice deep inhale. 
and exhale, beautiful. Then step the right foot forward, step the left leg back. As the left leg goes back, start first about a foot, foot and a half or so. Line up the outside of the right foot with the mat, outside of the left foot with the mat. Right knee, make sure it's stacked directly on top of the uh, arch of your foot. Left leg, just slightly bend the knee a tiny, tiny bit. Then all of the work is on the pelvis here. Take a deep inhale. As you exhale, tuck the tailbone under. Do you feel any opening through the front of your hip, any light stretching? If you do stay there, if your hips are a little bit more flexible, take your foot back a little bit further. Same tuck under. Do you feel it now? Holding that position, lengthen your body, lengthen your neck, settle your chin. Two deep inhales here. Deep inhale into the belly and exhaling out. One more time. Deep inhale into the belly and exhaling out. Beautiful, guys. Step that left foot forward. Now, we've opened up through the hip flexors. We already opened up through the hip rotators and capsule in sitting. All we have left to do, just all, is to really start to engage our gluteal muscles. The most important muscle for walking, the weakest muscle that most of us have as we age. So let's do some really good exercises in standing to wake up those gluteal muscles, get them working, and then hopefully be able to go on a fabulous walk. So find yourself in standing, take your right foot and place your right foot hip distance apart from your left foot so that your big toe on your right foot lines up with the heel of your left foot. So you're in a stride stance, but it's a very small stride stance. Check in that the alignment of the outside of your feet is occurring with your mat. Now, allow yourself to shift the weight to your right foot, shift the weight to your left foot. As you're shifting your weight left to right, let your entire trunk and body come with you. Then see if you can find the middle of the road, half of your weight on your left foot, half of your weight on your right foot. Now, if your pelvis is in a bad position, go ahead and find that neutral position of your pelvis. Lengthen your neck, settle your chin, maybe get those shoulder blades back and down if you're living up here in your neck in a stress response. Now, here's what I want you to do. This right leg, allow yourself to push into that right leg You'll feel your body move slightly forward. And then imagine that you're trying to push your right leg out and away from you behind you. So you're pushing that right leg, but there's no movement occurring. Can you feel the muscles that you're starting to fire on your right hip and trunk area? I actually am sweating right now because it's so, so much work to do that. So am I doing walking right now? No. Am I using the muscles that are most important for walking? Yes. Keep pushing that foot back and out. Feel those muscles engaging. Holding here. Let's do something with our arms and shoulders. So just gently shrug, rotate them back. Allow yourself to get those shoulder blades engaged and keep the hands so that they're beside you now. Now, if we were walking, our hands are opposite of our legs. So what I'd like you to do is take your right arm slightly forward, your left arm slightly back like you're reaching for something. Keep yourself in that position. Push even harder into that right leg. I hope you're getting burning in your hips like I am. Now, take a deep inhale into your belly. And exhale. One more breath. Deep inhale into your belly. And exhale, unrotate your arms and trunk, relax your legs. Okay, let's do it on the other side. So now you're doing the left gluteal focus. So line your feet up. So allow your left big toe to line up with the heel on your right foot. Feet are hip distance apart or two fists between them. Get the outside of the feet lining up with your mat. Once you're there, start to shift your weight front to back foot, right foot in the front, left foot in the back, right foot in the front, left foot in the back. Once you've done that several times, see if you can find that point in the middle for you where there's equal weight in your right leg and equal weight in your left leg. 
check in that your pelvis position is not too tucked under or too tilted. So find that happy medium between those two positions, lengthen your spine, allow your neck to be nice and long and your chin gently tucked inward. Now, start to push that left leg down into the floor. As you push that left leg down into the floor, you should feel your trunk slowly push slightly forward. Holding that position now with that left leg, imagine that you're trying to push it out and away from you. So you'll feel those muscles engage of the left gluteals while that right quadricep and hip also engages. Now keep pushing into that left foot. Feel how much engagement is happening through this entire left leg. And then let's do something with our arms. So let's just shrug our shoulders up, rotate our hands so that our thumbs are behind us, shoulder blades back and down, and give them a squeeze for a second. So reciprocal movement of our arms with our legs. So left arm, bring it slightly forward like you're bringing the hand to the center of your body. Right arm, bring it back like you're trying to reach something. All right, now your arms are in position. Really focus on that left leg now. Push that left leg down. Try to push it out and away from you. Holding that position, let's go through those two breaths. Nice deep inhale in and exhaling out. One more breath, deep inhaling in and exhaling out. Unrotate the trunk and the arms, relax the legs. All right, hopefully your glutes are firing just like mine are. Now we got our glutes going, we got our hips moving. They're already happy. Now we have to move up to our trunk. This is where most individuals fail with walking. So they don't use their trunk to walk. They use either their pelvis to walk. So they look like a wash, uh, a, um, a washing machine when they're walking, or they use their legs to walk. They kind of look like a tin man when they're walking. The reason that is, is because they don't have the muscles of their trunk turned on like a light switch and firing. So we're going to go through doing some nice, good exercises to get these muscles turned on. So your chair is going to be needed for balance here. We're going to start with our right leg. So here's what I want you to do. Hold on to your chair wall, whatever you have. Check that your left foot is on your mat so that the outside of the foot is lining up with the outside of the mat and your pelvis is straight forward to the front of your mat. Once you have that position, your right leg, bring your right leg up so that your knee is in line with your hip. Then take your toes and your ankle and pull them all the way up. Now, push down into your left leg. As you push into your left leg, you should feel your body grow taller. Right hand, right thigh. Start to push the right hand into the right thigh, the right thigh into the right hand. You will feel muscles firing through your hip flexors and your abdominals. Keep that position. Hold those foot, that foot and toes up. Give me a nice deep inhale here. Are you pushing long into your left leg? Exhaling here. One more breath, deep inhale in and exhale it. Release that right foot down. Repeating on the other side. So I'm just turning so that you can see me. Weight on the right foot now. So make sure that that right outer foot lines up with the outer of the mat. Pelvis, have it so that it's pointed straight forward. Hold on for balance, however you need to. Then left leg. Bring the knee so that it lines up with the hip. Take the toes and the ankle, point them up towards your head as much as you can. Left hand onto the left thigh, holding yourself right here. Right leg, push that leg down into the floor as you straighten that knee, really push down. Now, hand into the thigh, thigh into the hand. Can you feel those muscles engage through your trunk and your left hip here? Holding this position, taking a deep inhale in and exhaling out. Keep those toes up, keep that ankle up, push into that right leg, deep inhale in and exhaling out and relax the leg down. All right. Exercise number one for the trunk and the core done. Let's do the next one. So here's what I want you to do. Place your hands to the bottom of your ribs. Feel where the bottom of your ribs are because that's where your abdominals begin. So this time what I want you to do, maybe figure out which hand you're gonna hold on with. Uh, actually, hold on with the left hand if you can, guys. 
keep your right hand on your rib cage. Now, pretend you don't have a hip, you don't have a knee, and the only place I want you to bend forward from is where your ribs are on your hand. So you're not doing a gigantic kick up in the air at your hips. You're lifting yourself from where your hands are on the rib cage. Got it? So lift your leg up so it's not the hip working. It's where your ribs are working. Lift it up. It's a very small movement. Make sure you're pushing down into your left leg. Really pull yourself from those fingers being in those ribs. Hold that balanced position right there. Can you pull your toes up and your ankle up at the same time? Keep that position, holding it there. Take a deep inhale in. Really lift from where those ribs are. Exhale out. One more time. Deep inhale in. Exhaling out, dropping down. We've got to do the opposite leg. So allow yourself to take your left hand to your rib cage, right hand holding on for balance here. It's not a big kick. Feel where your ribs and your abdominals are. Don't let your hip flex. Allow yourself to bend where your fingers are at your rib cage. Allow your toes to come up, ankle to come up. Balance and push through that right leg holding yourself right here. Balance, take a deep inhale in. Make sure the movement's coming from where you feel it in the abdominals, exhaling out. One more breath, deep inhale in. And exhaling out. Great job, guys, drop that down. Last exercise in standing. I'm sure you're all very happy about that. So here's what I want you to do. Left foot, step it forward to the top or front of your mat, right leg, Bring it back until you feel like you can't go any further back and have balance through your right toes. Your left knee should be on top of your left arch of your foot. So you're in a big stride stance here. We're not doing a lunge. Now what I want you to do, this entire rib cage, bring it over that left leg. You've got it. Hold on for balance however you need to. Now with this right foot. Feel yourself do a single leg heel raise. So push off your toes. Now squeeze your glutes. Now use those abdominal muscles that we just practiced. Hold that position there. Oh, we're not done. If you can, if you feel your balance can take it, allow yourself to bring your left arm back, your right arm forward. Now, can you really squeeze through your glutes, really squeeze through your calf muscles, feel your abdominals engaging, feel that gentle twist of your rib cage, holding right here, give me two breaths, so deep inhale in and exhaling out. One more time, nice deep inhale in and exhaling out, release the arms and push that right foot forward. All right. Last preparation for walking in standing, left leg. So have the right foot forward, the left leg backwards, have it far enough back that you're comfortable being on your tippy toes. Make sure that right foot lines up. Pelvis is lined up with that mat. Once you have yourself, or uh, with the front of your mat, once you have yourself in that position, right knee over the arch of the foot, take that entire rib cage and stack it over that right leg. Now with this left leg, Lift those toes or heel as high as you can. Feel those calf muscles engaging. All right, here's where we really get the work done. Take those gluteal muscles and squeeze as tightly as you can. Think about those abdominal muscles that you just worked and see if you can get those to contract. All right, now the arms. Take the left arm slightly forward, the right arm slightly backward. Now lift through that left foot. Really squeeze through those glutes. Can you hold all of this? Give me a deep inhale in and a deep exhaling out. One more time, deep inhale in and exhaling out. Release the arms and step that left foot forward. Whew, we did it. We prepared for walking in standing. Now, here's what we need to do. We need to make it down to our mat so we can do a couple more opening exercises through our hips. So what I'd like you to do is move your chair out of the way, gently bring yourself down into your mat, and I will meet you there in child's pose. All right. 
We are in child's pose and it actually feels pretty good right now after all of that work in standing. So just allow yourself to check in that your knees are hip distance. And then maybe take a minute to look back at your feet and see that your feet and your ankles line up with your knees and then sit yourself back onto your heels. Let yourself drop your rib cage and your, your chest down towards your knees, soften your elbows, grab that yoga block if you need it to support your head on. And then in that position, just allow yourself to relax here. Now, once you have yourself there, Let's take this moment to kind of loosen up and, and, and let our low back be happy, right? So take a deep inhale into your belly and then exhaling out. One more time, deep inhale into the belly and then exhaling out. You've got it. Slowly bring yourself up onto hands and knees. Once you're there, knee position, foot position shouldn't have changed. Stack your hips on top of your knees. Bring those hands underneath the shoulders. Index fingers forward, thumbs in. Let's go through three cat cows here. So take an inhale, sink the belly, lift the tailbone. Shoulder blades back and down, lengthen the neck and look up. And then as you exhale, curl everything under chin to chest, look into your belly button. Two more times, inhaling. Sinking it all back down, looking up, exhaling, curling all the way up, tucking that chin in, looking into the belly button one last time. Inhaling, 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 and beautifully exhaling, 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 and exhaling. Now, stay where you are in your hands and knees. Take your right foot, step your right foot back. If it's off of your mat, so be it, that's okay. But allow yourself this position Make sure that your pelvis doesn't drop. So keep your pelvis nice and level. Just sit back into that right heel here. So use the strength of your arms to sit back. Check in that the outside of your right foot lines up. Tighten your knee. Yes, feel those calf muscles one last time. Super tight for a lot of us. We wanna make sure that we get nice, good flexibility through our ankles. One of the key dysfunctions with people that walk. So hold yourself right here, giving me a nice deep inhale into your belly. And exhaling out, one more breath, deep inhale in, and exhaling out, beautiful. Slide that right knee back in, take that left foot, slide it out behind you. Nothing's changed with the upper arms, but check in that your pelvis hasn't dropped and your pelvis is nice and level. Then push back into that left heel, make sure the outside of the left foot lines up with the outside of the mat. Lift that knee up nice and high so you feel that beautiful calf stretch. Holding into that calf stretch, two deep breaths, nice deep inhale into the belly. Exhaling out. One more time here, nice deep inhale into the belly. And exhaling out, beautiful. Slide that left leg in, let yourself lay down through your side. Make sure you've got your yoga block somewhere near you and then allow yourself to lay on your side and then slowly rotate over onto your back. Now. Once you're on your back, check in that you feel that you've got just a small arch of your low back. Once you have that, check in that your shoulder blades are underneath you, your feet are flat on the floor, underneath your knees, your knees look about hip distance apart. And then once you have all of that, lengthen your neck and cellular your chin, take your right knee into your chest, nice good hug, deep inhale in, Exhale, pulling that knee into your chest. Left leg, take an inhale, kick it up in the air. Exhale, drop it down onto the mat. Now, allow yourself here. Keep the neck long, keep the chin tucked. Pull the shoulder blades back and down. Take an inhale, push your left leg down into your mat. And then as you exhale, pull your right knee in. Two more times. Inhale, push that entire left leg down. Feel your glutes engaging. Exhale, pull your right knee in. Final time, inhale, pushing that left leg down and exhale, pulling that right knee in. Beautiful. Left leg, inhale, slide it up. Exhale, drop the right leg down onto the mat. Now with this left leg, inhale it up to your chest and as you exhale, pull it into your chest. Right leg, inhale, kick that leg out. Exhale, drop it down onto the mat. 
All right, some push and pull here with the muscles of our legs. So on your inhale, push your right leg down into the floor, feel your glutes engage. Exhale, pull your left knee into your chest. Two more. Inhale, pushing the right leg down into the ground. Exhale, pulling your left knee into your chest. And finally, inhale, pushing that right leg down into the ground and exhaling, pulling that left knee into your chest. All right, on your inhale, slide that right leg up and then on your exhale, drop that left knee to the mat. Find your block, place your block in your right hand, take your left hand and place your left hand underneath your buttock. All right, so that left hand's role is to make sure that you do not use your back or your pelvis and you are 100% into your hip here. So push your weight of your pelvis down into your left hand. Take your right ankle and bring it over your left knee. Now that you have that, take that yoga block, place it on the inside of that right knee. Now really make sure you don't let go of the weight onto your left hand. In this position, take a nice deep inhale and on the exhale, start to push that right knee away. As soon as you feel the weight unload off of your left hand, rotate the weight more onto it so that you can stay in that right hip. All right, now in this position, lengthen your neck, settle your chin. Let's take a couple nice deep belly breaths here. So deep inhale into the belly. And exhaling out. Nice deep inhale into the belly. And exhaling out. Beautiful job. Slowly release the block away from the right knee. Uncross the right leg. Left hand comes from underneath you and then grab that block with your left hand. Take that right hand now and bring it underneath your pelvis on that right side. And feel yourself pushing the weight into that right hand. Keep the weight into your right hand. Take that left ankle up and over that right knee that block on the inside of that left knee. Now be very cognizant that you keep pushing into your right hand. Take a nice deep inhale here and on the exhale, start to push that left knee away from you. Beautiful opening through that left outer hip. Holding here, two deep belly breaths. Nice deep inhaling in and exhaling out. One more time, deep inhaling in and exhaling out. Most excellent. Slowly taking that block away from the knee. You are done with that block. Place it beside you. Uncross that right leg. Once you have that position, slide, or sorry, left leg, you uncross it. <laughs> right leg, slide it down the mat. Left foot, place it on top of your right foot. Right hand, grab that left knee, left hand, gently bring it out to the side of your body. Now take a nice deep inhale here. And then as you exhale, start to pull that left knee to the right. Feel that stretch through your gluteals. Feel your pelvis lift, your low back lift, your rib cage lift, but keep that left shoulder blade down. Lengthen through that left arm, lengthen through your neck, and then gently rotate your neck to the left. Make sure your chin feels like it's still tucking in as you gaze at your thumb. Now in this position, take a nice deep inhale into your belly and exhaling out. One more time, deep inhale into the belly and exhaling out. You've got it. Start with unrotating that neck first. So bring your gaze back up to your ceiling. Start at your left rib cage and slowly let the left rib cage come down, followed by the low back followed by the pelvis, unrotate that left knee, place your left foot on your mat, slide your right foot up, slide your left leg down. Right foot comes up onto the left thigh, left hand to the right knee, right hand out to the side of your body. Take a deep inhale here and then on that exhale, slowly pull that right knee across your body, feel that stretch through your hips, your gluteals, lift the pelvis, Lifting the low back, lifting that rib cage, keep that right shoulder blade down. Now lengthen through that right arm, lengthen through that neck, and then turn your gaze to the right. Allow the chin to stay tucked in. So gazing at that right thumb, take a deep inhale into your belly here. And exhaling out. One more breath, nice deep inhale into the belly. And exhaling out. 
starting with your neck, unrotate your neck so that you're looking at the ceiling. And then right rib cage is next. Let the right rib cage pull down, followed by the low back, followed by the pelvis. Unrotate that hip for that knee upright. Place the right foot on the floor, slide the left leg up. Now take one knee at a time, knees up to your chest. Give your knees to your chest. Make sure that your feet do not cross. So don't break all of those beautiful alignment rules that you just spent an entire hour fixing. Take a deep inhale here. And then as you exhale, gently pull those knees into your chest. Lengthen your neck, settle your chin. Take the deepest inhale into your belly that you've got right now. And then exhale out. Now, if you farted, it's okay. Nobody's home with you. Just let it go. <laughs> Let's do one more time. Deep inhale into the belly. And exhaling out, beautiful guys. Now let one foot drop down to the floor, followed by the other. Make sure that your low back feels in a comfortable position. Once you feel like your low back is in a comfortable position, allow yourself to roll your shoulder blades underneath you. Let your arms gently fall out to the side. And then one leg at a time, slide that leg down to the corner of your mat. Let your heel feel the edge of your mat. And once it feels the edge of the mat, just place it gently on the mat. Lengthen your neck, settle your chin. Rest your tongue on the roof of your mouth and then gently close your eyes. Walking. Walking is so many pieces of movement happening all at the same time. What we did with class today is we basically did a little dissection and broke it out to focus on certain parts of the ankle and the feet and the hips and the trunk. So that the next time that you go for a walk, you can maybe think about your push off. You can maybe think about those abdominals being used. Maybe you can think about how that arms swing is with the legs and the pelvis. You know, let your body be nice and still. Take this last moment to think about what was the hardest thing you did in class? Was it something related to stretching? Was it something related to balance? Was it something related to strengthening? What was the hardest thing that you did in this last hour? Because chances are, if it was the hardest, it's likely what you need the most. And so commit to yourself for the next few days to take a five or 10 minute walk. And before you do that walk, do at least that one activity to prepare for your walking. Because if you have difficulty doing it, chances are it shows in your walking. Now start to wiggle your fingers and your toes and do circles with your wrists and your ankles. And then when you're ready, sliding up one leg followed by the other leg and slowly letting yourself roll over onto your side, resting there just for a moment, taking a nice deep inhale. And then as you're exhaling, maybe even a smile on your face. And then whenever you're ready on an exhale using the bottom elbow and the top hand, pushing yourself up into a seated position. Easy pose, first time we've been here today, but your legs are just gently crossed and your hands, ah, they're at your heart. All right, last thing to think about before we end a class on walking. Guidelines for exercise are 150 minutes a week. Now, if you exerted yourself in this class, you can kind of start to deduct those 150 minutes. But I encourage you, once you're done with this class today, throw those walking shoes on and go for a good solid 10 or 15 minute walk. Do your body the good it needs to keep moving. Nice deep inhale in and exhale out. Namaste, the highest in me salutes the highest in you. Thank you for joining me today.